and welcome to the Audiobook Club. In this week's episode, we're so lucky to be joined by Queen creator and content creator, Merzi. Hello, mate. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. How are you today? Hey, John. I'm all good. Thank you. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, no, it's a pleasure. I'm doing all right. All the better for uh, having you uh, on the other side of Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as is tradition on the show, um, I'd really like to start by getting to know a little bit more um, about how you found yourself in the world of social media, content creation, and, of course, Quinn. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a ride, uh, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I guess social media wise, I was always the uh, the annoying kid on Facebook that was just post random statuses about his dinner and <laughs> stuff that you don't need to know about. And I just would just use it as like a place to vent and a bit of a journal, really. Mm. Um, so I was, yeah, I was, I was quite active on platforms like Bebo and then Facebook and then when Instagram yeah. come along, but. Uh, never had like a, a following or, or anything like that. I just used to annoy the kids from school. Um, but I always enjoyed it. I always found it quite a fascinating place just to kind of like, I don't know, market yourself and uh, share things and create things that you liked. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, it was an interesting place. And yeah, as kind of just experimented with different platforms and uh, try a new types of content uh never really as i say took off i tried different aliases and and things but um it wasn't until i really i started making tiktoks maybe two years ago as a bit of a laugh because it was more of a platform that suited my kind of style of content that i liked where i could mm -hmm. be a bit silly and use sounds and stitch other people's content and that's kind of where the audio erotica chapter weirdly started <laughs> um okay yeah, book yeah. talk, book talk were able to grab me thanks to the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, so when you're, um, because obviously when you're creating content for social media, you're taking like an aspect, you're sort of, when you're coming up with that content ideas, I'm guessing mm -hmm. you're sort of taking like things that happen in your life or little stories and stuff, and then look, finding an angle of how you can create content from that like piece of real life or piece of that idea. So that when you mentioned like, you know starting off on Bebo and Facebook and all that sort of stuff have you sort of always kind of looked at your life like that like how can I make a story out of this how can I make a fun idea out of this and all that sort of stuff is that always just kind of been a thing that you've enjoyed yeah absolutely I think it's, I've always enjoyed and it's, it's even been part of my jobs and it's even my job now but I've always been a bit of a storyteller I've always yeah. enjoyed be it like just like yeah trying to angle even something I think that's kind of how I feel like I've developed kind of and been able to get opportunities is like I haven't mm. necessarily been through anything that's different to other people, but I've been able mm. to present it in a way that's a bit maybe a bit more um, mm. yeah, a, a appealing or it stands out like uh, yeah. I think the ability to story tell. So, yeah, probably, yeah, from a young age, like just being able to angle stuff and just being transparent, I think it's been such a, a fun benefit. But like you say, I, I mainly... I, it's more of like the silly stuff that I was doing and starting and it's just yeah it's a bit of a full circle and yeah very fascinating how the world works like that <laughs> yeah absolutely. so when so was it like other people like in the comments or all things like that was telling you um oh you should really consider voice acting was that like how that came about or did was it something that you had sort of in the toolbox um ahead of content creation yeah it's a good good question because I I've, I've kind of been unpacking this as I've I've been looking back to be like, well, how have we, how have we got here? <laughs> yeah. But um, so I, I had like, I've got like no professional experience. I've, I've done no, like, no, no narration or acting or like, or things like that. The, the kind of tools that I had was from a young age. I would always do like impressions and like mm. mimicry stuff and like try different voices from like comedians and TV mm. programs I liked, but like nothing extensive. Um, which I think a lot of people do and then i i've got a b in gcc drama i was quite a drama kid in school but i was also very sporty yeah and uh basically i had this like fork in the road when i got to my a levels where it was like do i pursue sport or do i pursue performing arts yeah. it was actually a really hard decision but i went down the sport route hmm. um um and it's weird that it's kind of come back i'm very fortunate that that kind of second chance yeah. is such a full circle to give it a go but and then from like the creative side of things i i've never really done any 
I'm, I, until book top came along i hadn't, hadn't read much fiction books at all mm-hmm. so the creative writing stuff has been new to me but i again i've got kind of relatively strong gcses in in english so that, that kind of again helped so i think it's just it's a very weird combination of everything that's kind of formulated into like where i am now with like yeah. social media um the voices I, I never in a million years when i kind of have been mucking around with friends doing accents and kind of like making like little sketches i yeah. think that like that would be a benefit or a job for me like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like um you know walking around the house doing silly voices and like annoying ex-girlfriends and stuff but like, <laughs> <laughs> now it's uh <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yeah it's so when you said you said you went down the sports route um like after education was am i right in saying that's like jiu-jitsu and cage fighting and stuff yeah so i um in in secondary school yeah i, I was very much into like kickboxing boxing like mm. mixed martial arts and jiu-jitsu and i pursued mixed martial arts i really wanted to be a professional mma fighter um mm. and i went to uni and i was a, a sports scholar in mma and jiu-jitsu and i was kind of semi-pro like it would technically be like amateur but semi-pro because of like you, you kind of got paid and stuff like a little bit mm. um and I, I pursued that and it just wasn't really working out for me even though i was kind of training really hard like i just had a mm. few like mental issues going on mm. and it didn't work out the way i dreamed of but i still was able to experience it as a chapter and mm. um had an amazing time and made lots of friends and you know once in a lifetime experiences but yeah, yeah. um yeah I, w- I was always athletic and sporty as a kid like i played um football from the age of like four to like 16 played a bit of rugby just always enjoyed my sports but um I always kind of in anything I did I always kind of had a bit of a creative a desire a a bit more of a desire for creativity (laughs) it's it's, it's a really interesting journey as well because like definitely I mean I think I've I've interviewed so many voice actors and narrators and storytellers on this podcast I don't I think you're the first cage fighter (laughs) 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 so it's, it's a really cool crossover um and and all the experiences that you will have had through that and i'm sure that you will find outlets creatively from those experiences whether it's character types or you know direct like storylines and stuff which you know it's it's a great thing to have mm. yeah definitely yeah. It's, it's, it's very the way the one the most important thing for me it was it was very humbling um cuz yeah. you know to to lose mma fights in front of like hundreds of people and your family and friends and kind mm. of t- your ego take a bashing it kind of like helped me apply that like made me in any journey i go into now i just try and appreciate the, the present and just mm. like um you know know that you can there's always time where you're probably gonna f- you can fall and mm. things don't work out the way you always think or hope to no matter like your your work effort and just how you kind of mm. tackle that and dust yourself off and just go again and try again and be persistent and things like that so yeah there's so yeah. many valuable lessons in it and uh yeah, definitely stuff I take forward with me every day. But I, I mean, I haven't. I were. I my last MMA fight was like seven, eight years ago. But I still do jujitsu yeah. now as a bit of like therapy and and fitness and health. But um, yeah, yeah, I very much prefer uh, writing and and uh, building characters than get my face caved in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, when all this, when Quinn came about, mm. when you were given, you know, this whole opportunity, you know, doors of opportunity opened up, and you were faced with, you know, making audios, you were, you know, faced with the task of writing, recording, producing things, and putting it out into the world. Kind of, what was your initial reaction to that? Was it like, you know, excitement? Was it there a little bit of nerves in there? Could you talk us through like where you were at at that, like, you know, right, real at the start of this, you know, crazy journey? Yeah, so it was all very surreal um because i i i kind of as you say as you as we kind of briefly discussed like when the engagement is a different level um mm-hmm. in terms of like, it wasn't what i was kind of used to but um there was it was just nice to see there was clear interest from both quinn and the the audience and at the time um you know quinn reached out to me when i was very early in tiktok mm-hmm. um and i was very new to I didn't know what audio erotica was and I initially was just like, I don't think this is for me. Um, I was very like, at that time in my life as well, I was very like, into, like going through a lot of 
inner healing with my kind of self-esteem mm. and confidence issues and just like trying to figure out life and um at, at the time i just didn't feel like it was for me um and then a couple of months passed and i actually um i joined another app where i kind of again it was all very new i built a little bit of experience but um not lows but it was still great um opportunity and exposure and kind of mm. and, and it, like i under i started to understand audio erotica and audiences and stuff and then um a few more months after that is when kind of been reached out again and i was kind of in a bit of a better place in myself and i built a bit of an experience and a little bit of you know a bit of a, a, a little bit of a reputation but not like nothing like some of the other the big dogs we you know <laughs> but it was nice to um it was just a nice feeling to be like wanted and like people valued what I, like the work i was doing and, and kind of saw my potential so mm. um that's when it was like a real excitement and like okay like everything really is aligning the way i want it to and mm. um although it it was a it's, it's been a bit of a an up and down strange journey like that's how i've always kind of life's always kind of felt a bit like that for me mm. so I, I was just like gotta grab this with both hands and mm. i'm very from those past experiences i'm very like an ambitious and driven person i want to do well in anything i do yeah and i feel like this was the opportunity to kind of do that and kind of i was in the right headspace to kind of come in and just try my best and uh mm. yeah it's been it's been absolutely wild <laughs> <laughs> i'm very grateful for it very very grateful for it it's uh yeah an amazing platform the the community are uh just the wonderful so yeah. yeah was there any because of like um not necessarily you know going towards audio erotica without necessarily like you know years and years and years of doing like other voice stuff mm -hmm. was there that kind of um that sort of conversation that you had to have with yourself of, oh no this is like super spicy this is really intimate this is like you know the about as personal as you can sort of get of like portraying yourself and obviously there's so many people who listen to it was that like a was that ever like a conversation in your head of like Ooh, i really better think about whether i'm like you know whether it, this, this is the sort of right path or were you just like oh no this is great oh let's do it no yeah so that was why i was hesitant initially mm. yeah um because i was like i just i, I just didn't feel because it was the first time i'd ever been exposed to it like when i first listened to some i was like i, I can't envision myself doing that mm. um but and uh, um but then i, I guess it's the same with anything once you're kind of exposed to stuff a bit more and you and you yeah. try and like i remember yeah the first few audios of spice or audio i ever did i was like oh this is taken this is this is different <laughs> um and then um yeah like and then after a while you just kind of build confidence and i think what really helped me was just seeing the impact it had on on others mm. that really kind of helped me shelf the the ego and the the kind of a slight discomfort at the start because it was like this is really benefiting mm. and like making an impact a positive impact on lots of people so like you got to kind of push like push through this bit, a bit of discomfort and you know yeah. that judgment of are people going to take the piss and like are people yeah. going to mock you like that was a huge one as well but then as you as I say do more and you see the impact and you kind of find more and more success of it you go I don't give a shit what other people think like yeah. <laughs> I, and I really really enjoy it now like which again was a bit of um, a nice pleasant surprise because it's just like, yeah, it's just so many creative outlets combined that you kind of help and it's just, you can yeah. add your own personal touches to stuff as I'm sure you. Yeah. yeah. Was it, was it the same for you? Was it like uh, just a, because I guess with your audio books, you might've done some mm -hmm. spicy stuff before, but like, how did you find it? Yeah. Very similar really. So there, there was, I, I, I was um, I, like, I, I think I was, I was, asked to do Quinn because of like doing spicy audio but it's mm. I mean you're playing a character you know and, yeah. and quite often it's like I do a lot of like American accent stuff so it's like I was in it wasn't even like close to me and mm. then this like being asked to be be you and be like you know as authentic and and that was like a learning curve that I had of trying to strip back that performance style of mm. it you know just trying to be more authentic and I think you know it has taken me a few audios to the point um 
you know, right at the start where I was like, okay, no, I really need to strip back and be more of myself. Mm. But then I think that's an ex- a self acceptance journey that I'm definitely still on. Of like, that's okay, because mm. um, you know, you think, oh well, I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not as charming as Tom, or I don't have like, you know, all of that sort of stuff that's going on. And you, and you sort of, it's that journey of going through your head, going, actually, no, it's okay, just be me and and offer yeah. like the real thing. So that was like the journey, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah, it's such a hot. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. And no, you you're killing it, man. And seeing the, <laughs> it's it's really nice to see your like everyone's got their own kind of communities building as well, and like within mm-hmm. the the app. And yeah, like you, you definitely, I, I definitely see the the loyal fan base of yours growing as well. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, well, we're well looked after, aren't we? <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Well, this is the thing. So you mentioned about like how the support of that community, uh, the support of the community, as you say, um, many of uh, of whom I'm sure are going to be listening to this episode, um, kind of allowed you to to sort of be, you know, be confident and enjoy it properly because you saw like how much people were loving it and things. Like, have you known like any like a much have you known a more supportive community than like the comment section on quinn or like you know the ones that follow you on tiktok and it's like on another level because we are considered like um you know favorite creators or, or in in some way or we we offer people like peace and like like self-love and, and things like that it's been so funny with things like i will have someone on a tiktok comment something maybe a little bit critical and it's not even like horrifically critical but they'll maybe like give me a little bit of a dig and within five minutes i've got seven (laughs) loyal (laughs) fan base jumping in to protect me before i've even had to say anything just to try and like yeah protect my um my confidence or or whatever and just like um it's just but it's it's you you can tell as well it's like um it's like sincere as well Mm. um and you know it, it just I've never ever experienced anything like it. As mm. I say, I've 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 had some because of my main content creation has always been around of like mental health awareness for the last kind of yeah. ten years or so. But like, I'll get lots of kind of like every now and again, I'll get a nice DM where people are like, "Thank you so much. Your your content's like really valuable and it's helped me through a lot." But mm. some of the in depth um, kind of impact that people share about how like one audio has affected their their life or their relationship and like knowing that that you've like had a that much of a positive impact on you that they're gonna like have that level of loyalty and support Mm. is is just like it's wonderful it's it's just like wow like and yeah the passion the passion is one thing i've learned (laughs) is just the high energy passion and yeah uh yeah you know if you're listening i love you all (laughs) (laughs) so in terms of you know having to do weekly audios you constantly have to be you know thinking ideas through and and piecing bits and pieces together what does your pre-production your writing stage what does your writing process kind of look like at the moment yeah so it's it's kind of a bit scattered and you kind of learn as you go um as you know but um yeah i used to initially start with like full as much of a full script as i could Mm -hmm. um but it kind of um i don't know i think because of my like kind of um the way my like my mental health and my my neurotypical like neurodivergence sorry like stuff it Mm. didn't it was kind of hard just to stay in like a lane sometimes with with Mm. scripts and i'd kind of like so i just found that like writing a bit of a a skeleton i'll have the core idea core Mm. characters the kind of core trope um and the direction and then i'll have like the key skeleton maybe like four or five key um points and then i'll kind of some a lot of the time i kind of just i'll free flow a bit Mm. once i have a direction um but i will what i typically need now is i'll I'll, i will need maybe like the first five minutes of the script written Mm. which is not typically the spicy stuff that's kind of a bit more of a, a flow but the, the core concept um, and then first initial engagement I'll have written and then I kind of will see how comfortable I am whilst I'm in the booth recording and mm. see how I feel a lot of the time. Mm. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I've definitely, uh, I read, like, I'm, I don't know if you're the same, I read every single comment on, on the platform yeah. and like take feedback and people will DM me and be very honest. I've, I've had lots of wonderful DMs 
terms of what I love about, as I say, with the loyalty of, of, of kind of the listeners is I've had people DM me being like, what the fuck was that? And you go, <laughs> they're like, oh, what was that? That wasn't you. you. You could tell you wasn't into that and stuff. And you go, oh, wow, like they, they really are in, yeah. invested and, you know, you kind of have to take that on board and, and yeah. uh, stuff like that. So it's, <laughs> Is it difficult to sort of separate that? Because um, with the intimacy of, of, what, of, of what these audios are, is it difficult to sort of separate that professional side of you to the personal side of you? Because, like, you know, if, if cause that idea of, you know, when, when people comment on TikTok, you might be able to go, OK, no, that's my that's the online me. That's not that's not really mm. me. But then and I suppose it's kind of similar on Quinn because you have a, your persona and then you have the real you. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, is it quite difficult to separate that when people say oh, I didn't like this aspect of you and you're they're sort of thinking, well, I, that's kind of the, that was me. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's um, yeah, it can be very. I'm very like um, I'm self-critical anyway. Um, mm. so like I definitely um, and my my kind of online personal brand over the last like ten years, as I say, has been more. It's very transparent. It's very much like um, what you see is what you get, and mm. um, when when people are um like critique like but luckily this one was from a nice place it was actually it was a nice message it, i think it was just yeah. a person's sense of humor and yeah. she, they, and, and, and whatever you so it wasn't like i took mad offense to it but it was just like it, it proved to me that like um one comment will make you like because i'm an overthinker <laughs> like it will just spiral right, yeah. me and i remember i had one that did irk me um where and it, it like and i remember i, I was quite i read so on the this is like the, to, to kind of show how much our mind like the mind can be crazy is it was an audio and I had I think there was seventy five comments seventy four were positive and this was one negative and it destroyed me for about two weeks mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it just got yeah. in my head yeah. and um, you know even though it's um, you know it's, it's, it's mm. I didn't take. I try not to take it too personally, but it was when people were like, uh, "She's like the person said like, oh, he he's given a very like selfish vibe," and I actively like try my like I believe that like my stuff isn't that selfish at all. Maybe it was just that audio in particular, and it might be the first one they listened to. There's so many factors, but I was like, wow, like it really like mm. killed me because I was like if you, like I really make an effort in what I write to make sure that it's not selfish and the fact mm-hmm. that it's still being perceived as selfish it maybe just like it maybe go in and be like is it like is there is there truth to this you know and you, yeah and you just you learn that everything is super subjective like yeah um even with like TikTok when I voice do voice renditions of people's favorite characters and they're like no it doesn't that doesn't that's not what he sounds like you got to be like subjective though so i understand like you don't take it too personally <laughs> like yeah. um yeah that boundary of of kind of personal and professional is is a very interesting one but luckily over the last kind of i'd say two months and since i've been talking with other creators and how they manage it like mm-hmm. i've learned a lot and kind of that separation is really important for for all of our mental mm-hmm. health and um mm-hmm. I think what I love as well is that the the audience respect that. Um, yeah, you know, they they understand that a lot of us do read every single comment, and we really do appreciate them, and we we value them, and you know it's it's important that we kind of set boundaries for ourselves um, mm. to protect it. So yeah, absolutely. With your um, with you know so much of your job being online and twenty four hours a day, people can get in touch with you and tell you thoughts and all that sort of stuff. With you having to think of weekly audios and write and all of the production that comes with that with all everything else that you've got going on and it's it's not like a nine to five it's all the time <laughs> yeah. how do you sort of balance that you know is have you got a work-life balance at the moment like what what are there any steps that you take to just try and give yourself a little bit of time that's away from sort of like a public persona if, if you will yeah it's a really good question it's really hard since i've gone like kind of full-time with all this it's been like uh um it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of two sides of the coin because i enjoy everything that i do it doesn't feel like a job so i don't mm. feel st- like stress like i used to in my other jobs i don't feel 
I, I still feel pressure because I want to perform, but like I don't feel like the, the the type of stress that I was in and like the avoidant kind of traits that I had where I'd um you know kind of switch off and dis dissociate and stuff and mm. want to get away. So I don't feel like I'm I don't sometimes I don't feel like I need to, but then you burn out because you don't realize, as you say, you're always on and you're always thinking about something. You're always posting mm. something. Like I do, I've got the the one Quinn audio a week. I do two podcasts a week on my Patreon. I do mm. DJ stuff. I do my mental health, public speaking. I, I make the TikTok and Instagram content. Like, I, yeah. and then like all that whilst trying to maintain a social life and train and, focus on your fitness and you know dating it's just yeah it's yeah. you're spinning so many plates and it's just not sustainable so like yeah some of those plates i don't don't get as much attention as as others but um i'm definitely learning to um the importance of switching off like that's why this weekend um and going and spending time with my friends in the mountains was was beautiful but mm -hmm. i need to kind of build better habits with maybe like certain times off my phone um like so for mm. example this afternoon i might just go sit in the park and read a book and in the sun and try and stay away from my phone for most of the day and then maybe later in the evening once you know things kind of content comes out maybe but it's it's still something i'm learning i've, I've always been bad at it um mm. always on my phone like it's, it's not healthy but it's hard because especially um as i'm sure you, you experience it as well with a lot of a u.s audience you want to be engaging at peak times mm -hmm. with, with them. So that's often later in the evening. So, yeah. Um, but I've always been a bit of a night owl. So I, I go to bed at two or three in the morning every night. <laughs> um, I have done since I was a teenager. So um, yeah. that's usually a bit more of my downtime. Mm -hmm. um, but it can definitely chew you up. I've definitely burned out a couple of times this year already. And it's just like I need mm -hmm. to be a bit bit more savvy and yeah. learn learn from the mistakes. Yeah. Have you have you implemented like a work routine in terms of creating content in terms of creating your, your podcast? So what does like a typical so say like on a day on a Quinn recording day, what's like a typical day in the life kind of look like at the moment? Yeah, so like start of the week, so a Monday is typically like the my Quinn recording because mm -hmm. again I'm quite limited. Um where where I'm live I mean I live in a house share in South London um mm. and it's quite a busy area and I'm right by a train line and I live above a restaurant um and there's a lot of lot of noise pollution so I'm actually limited to recording for for Quinn where I'm kind of like in the where I really have to be in the zone is, is one day a week <laughs> um I can do other days but it just requires a bit more editing and um a bit more kind of faff with with noise pollution and stuff but yeah, so I'll typically, Mondays is my Quinn recording day and then Tuesday's Quinn release day. So I do dedicate my Tuesday evenings a lot of the time to promoting it and resharing and engaging um, and just seeing the overall reaction. Wednesdays is when I record one of my other podcasts, my podcast on Patreon. Thursday and Friday is a bit more of like my, bit more of a weekend feel for me. Like it'll be more like life admin um i still do other little small projects um I, a lot of writing in that in those kind of days um but i try and bit a bit of switch off saturday can be anything it can be typically um either dj stuff or mm. um again more like social media stuff like a big tiktok day or something or um networking and then sunday is when i do my second podcast of the week for patreon hmm. and maybe some finalizing some writing for the upcoming yeah. audio audio of the week um so yeah there's 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 lots like without that i've got a whiteboard just to my right actually because for the first kind of cut two three months of going full time and being so used to um office structure and as i say being neurodivergent like it's very easy for me to get distracted and not stick to routine and i i kind of yeah. typically have always struggled with routine so i've yeah. got it written on my whiteboard what i need to do each week um and like the amount of content to post and stuff and like it's not looking at it now it's not concrete but like there's still four of the days where it's like that is the gospel like you can't mm. miss these days like that is 
what you have to kind of time things around and that's yeah. really helped me there's like enough structure and enough flexibility that works for me and how i work which is perfect yeah. So. Yeah, I suppose that's like one of the benefits being able to control your own hours is you're able to move things around mm -hmm. as you sort of see fit. And then I, but I think having enough routine to avoid like, oh, I sod this, I'm just going to go <laughs> yeah. like, do, do, you know, do nothing you know, to keep you at least being productive. And stuff. But it sounds like a really diverse, like really creative week um, yeah, that you've man. got going on. I mean, that must, I mean, also doing lots of, I mean, like, not everything that you do nothing's like kind of the same so you've got like your dj stuff you've got your mental health talks like your keynote that i know we, we spoke about um mm -hmm. previously and then you're like recording a quid and then it's like it's so <laughs> it's you know it's really uh it's really interesting to hear like how different all of those things are mm. yeah it's been it's been strange but i've always um i've always be like it's it's good for me because i mm. without that i would always drift and to start new thing but i'm like with mm. this i'm i'm con kind of constantly always stimulated and there's always something yeah. for me to drive towards and like be ambitious with and like as i say there's some weeks where um yeah like the the dj stuff will take a hit and it'll go very quiet and i won't mm. maybe as much engagement in that but then i'll have a lot more effort and focus on like mm. i don't know patreon or, or what i don't know how yeah it's 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 just nice to have different things to focus on and i i kind of i've always been um a bit of a no stone unturned person i once i want to do something i'll give it a go and um once i enjoy it i will stick but there's some things that i've tried that don't stick and um luckily for me now and the routine that i have and as i say it just doesn't feel like a, a job i just love everything yeah. that i do and the freedom i think for me the freedom and the stability of where I'm at now has been the most beneficial for everything in my life, my mental health and yeah. just general well-being. And um, as I say, just really, really grateful that that's the position I'm in. Yeah. So you, you are so open and honest and fantastic on social media about, you know, your mental health challenges and, and struggles and resilience uh, and everything that comes with that. And do you think that maybe an aspect of, of, of why you're so popular um, you know, with your fan base and building that community is because you're presenting your authentic real self um, because, you know, and that resonates so much with people because I think we see so much, you know, so many um, from uh, accounts that are so painted and, you know, that sort of like fake life and everything sort of perfect stuff on social media that we're all really familiar with. But as, as through your content, it's like I know a lot of people in myself included feel that, you know, we're connecting with you so much more. Mm -hmm like through you being authentic was that like you know was that a decision that you made or was that just that look i'm me and i'm going to talk about this because that's you know yeah no thank yeah. you thank you man um yeah no it was always um uh a decision always something i wanted to do i always believed that i said i've been on social media for a few years as like a consumer and like a fan mm -hmm. and like a, of other creators and stuff and i just um yeah, I just always felt like that just looks too, I'd rather just be honest. And uh, mm. especially with like the mental health stuff and talking about it from a young age, I just knew, I kind of had a, an idea about the impact it would have on the bigger picture. And I just feel like mm. it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's it's not what you see. What, I just wanted to, I wanted that approach, just like what you see is what you get. Like, yeah, I'm having a, a, mm. a shit day uh, or this, this mm. is what I've been through. And I think, yeah, it definitely has, um, like benefited me i guess but like i think it's just like a very it's a weird way to say when you look back at like challenging times and trauma and stuff but that mm. that that exposure and the different experiences i've been through i i'm very i just know that there's at least something that someone will resonate with and i have people from all walks of life reach out to me with like i've been through that especially after the talk i did last week and it was just like wow mm. this is really surreal and um yeah, like I just feel like I want to, I just want to be that person. Like I, I want to kind of just be real, and um, you know, I, I, that vulnerability. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but like initially, you think like, oh, people are gonna take advantage or mock you, but it's like if they do, that's a that's a fucking sorry for swearing. <laughs> um, <laughs> as a reflection of themselves um yeah that's not a reflection on me and you know i just got to stick true to to me and just like i say i think what where it can get a bit um 
sticky is where people I don't know I don't want to give the impression that like everything like I, I think especially with like the the Quinn stuff is like people think like oh I can't do wrong and like I'm like a bit of an angel and it's like no like I'm not like I'm not a perfect human like I'm not like yeah. although I can come across on social media like I do share my struggles but they don't you don't necessarily see like the grumpy me or the the you know the the mo when, uh, with the bipolar you don't see the mm. the snappy short maybe a slightly aggressive me I won't mm. I won't typically share that stuff I'll talk about it very openly but you, it's a very different thing to kind of read and see it on social media and then being in the presence of that and um so yeah that's where it can kind of be a bit um sticky and I, I, will, I will still always be very open about like how I'm not it's not mm -hmm. it's not perfect and like just because you talk about your feelings doesn't mean that you're always necessarily like the mm -hmm. an angel a good person and there's definitely mm -hmm. situations in life where you kind of aren't and you know you have to learn from it like I say we've, I've spoken about it before like old relationships and things and yeah it's it's all learning and I think that's where that's the bit I like to share is like you learn from the mistakes you mm. take it I think the biggest thing for me is taking accountability and that's where I think I've reaped the most reward from is I don't yeah I don't, I don't like to make excuses and point fingers and that's I think been a big part of like the success over the last couple of years as I've grown and worked on my worked on myself and my healing and my trauma so it's a very yeah and I think it's also it, it's incredibly rewarding for your like your viewers as well like like from my point of view when watching a lot of your stuff it's like you know like things are going all right you know career wise and stuff I'm booking gigs and everything's great but then a lot of the time I'll wake up and I'll just be in like a proper ass and not and just just not yeah. content with things or just not just don't even know if there's a reason why just like yeah. you know, suffering with with just not feeling like I'm worthy of it or mm. just you no know, not just wanting to sack everything off and just go sit mm. in some woods somewhere and I think you know engaging in content where people are being honest and authentic and you kind of think oh there isn't actually anything wrong with me everyone's going through this yeah or most of us anyway yeah and I think that is incredibly uh helpful to say the least um you know so yeah I mean as a yeah so I think you're doing a great <laughs> oh, thank you, man. yeah and I'm glad and it's uh, it's really nice to um that it has that that kind of that impact and I say everyone everyone goes through it and uh as I say that's what that was kind of what we picked up on earlier as I say my mm. my storytelling and like my ability and the confidence in myself doing that I've been kind of building that ability to share those kind of things over quite a long period of time but as I say mm. um as we said earlier I haven't necessarily been through anything worse than other people it's just maybe I've just got the as I say, I've built the confidence to be able to talk about it, and that's my kind of like mm. superpower in a way that I can, I have, I can do that, and I can start paving mm. the way for other people to do that. And as I say, I'm glad that people don't feel alone, and there's, there's, I say, there's always something to resonate with, which is nice, which I'm glad. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I was talking to uh, our, our mutual mate Tom York uh, uh, last week. And we touched upon a topic that I thought was super interesting, actually. I hadn't actually thought about it before our conversation, before we brought it up. Um, but it's about um, how creating content on Quinn has had, um, you know, may have had a positive impact on other aspects of our lives as creators. So, like, have you noticed anything, like, you know, anything similar for that, any sort of impact, hopefully positive, for what recording on Quinn for you know, the months and months and months that you've been doing, is it almost a year now or is it a year? Uh, a six, six months, seven six months. Six months, yeah. seven months. So like, after, have you noticed, God, you've achieved so, like loads of, like that, that shot by the time. <laughs> so um, yeah, so after recording for like seven months, have you noticed anything, any impacts on other parts of your life from that, you know, exploring inner thoughts and desires and all those sort of things on a weekly basis? Have you noticed anything transfer into other aspects? Are you talking spicy stuff? I don't, not necessarily. <laughs> I mean, you can go with that if you. I I think I can't remember. We were talking about last week, and I can't. I can't for the life of me remember what I actually said was my sort of thing. But I think it's the idea of like being more open with your yeah. with, with your emotions and mm -hmm. that kind of you know vulnerability. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, 
um i don't know yeah so yeah, i've i've actually learned so much about um like the the kind of female gaze and like about mm. the like how uh, i mean i've always had a a pretty I would say a pretty healthy relationship with 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 women and 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 kind of um and things like that. But I just feel like I've again because of the the level of um, engagement as well. I've just learned so much like healthier. I don't know what the word would be. Um, it's it like my 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 audios. They they kind of they're very they're very kind where they share that like my audios and and things make them feel safe but the reason that my audios i think uh like resonate is because of what i'm learning from from them mm. uh, and the audience and like um learning from you know my own mistakes as a man uh, and and um and other men's mistakes and kind of situations that women have been through and um you know relationship dynamics and and things and it's just been like I, I kind of uh i would never I feel like when i was younger i was kind of quite a romantic but you know you get your heart smashed a few times and you kind of become yeah. a little bit like cold and bitter and uh a bit more distant but um yeah. yeah especially like with with quinn and kind of like starting to read like like the fantasy stuff i i just kind of understand the bigger picture and the perspective of of women more um and it's it's crazy how um i don't know how to describe it it's quite a, um i'll kind of it's like unearthed stuff like the things that i knew when i was younger but you kind of unpack your own experiences yeah. and trauma from it and like how like oh this shaped me like this relationship shaped me this way and like yeah. oh the there's things i said to, to this girl and this response means this and like yeah you kind of just like it's very educational for it has mm. been especially the early on like for, for me and then now it's just like making taking comfort in that and like mm -hmm. taking comfort and that you know for me I've always been a very sensitive and emotional guy I'm a Pisces <laughs> 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 but um they uh like you you kind of I've learned that like through the storytelling and through the engagement they're like it's it's absolutely fine for me for me to be that and it's and people actually really appreciate that and yeah. you can take confidence in that so i've become like a bit more confident in myself in terms of like relationships and and, and things like there's still a lot to learn but yeah overall it's just very like educational and I, i've always hated the very much like male versus female dynamic um and i i kind of like with my writing to try and bring a bit of harmony um and just demonstrate that like men can play this role and women can play this role whatever way it can flow yeah. uh, it can flow and it's just all about like the kind of unity and the connection and stuff and yeah, yeah. It, obviously it depends on each audio but, but yeah overall just very educational and uh as i say always a lot for me to learn but yeah, yeah. it's been it's been great yeah i love that answer it's really interesting to hear that and i, I certainly resonate uh, with mm. with a lot of that it's um it's an interesting one because i think um you know you sort of start out at this gig as a, as a performer go right okay let's try and knock some socks off some people yeah. and then you end up like <laughs> learning loads back and you, sort of, you know it becomes like a a bit of an avenue of self-discovery mm, uh, which is uh, in, in my uh in, in you know for me was very much needed i think yeah. um, <laughs> Um, so to finish us off, I have a few um, broader questions uh, cool. to help our audience get to know uh, a little bit more about you. Um, mm. Is that is that all right? Absolutely fine. So the first one is, uh, what is a challenge that you're currently facing? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, just in general, <laughs> I think... Mm. <laughs> I think balance mm. yeah I think I just need to I'm not prioritizing my uh my health well no I'm not no basically I I um because I've been so busy and fixated on work and growth and success like I've mm. been dropping a few other things like, I haven't really been training much jiu-jitsu lately and uh um just kind of distracting myself so yeah I, I would like to 
I've been going to the gym and I've still been going on runs and stuff, but yeah, I need to kind of incorporate jujitsu back into my life mm. in a way that where I can kind of rebalance that. Um, but it's a challenge because, because of my neurodivergence, I hyperfixate mm. and um, it would be very, once I train consistently, then that becomes a big focus. Then one of the other plates will fall and I can't really afford one of the plates that involve my career to yeah. be take uh not, not have my attention so yeah i just need to be a bit more mindful and focus on how i do that so maybe it just means that i only train jiu-jitsu once a week and keep myself healthily distanced mm -hmm. and just do it f for the right reasons and then yeah mm. balance yeah yeah i get that what does downtime look like for you at the moment downtime for me i've always enjoyed i just like i'm gonna do it in a in a little while i like my music my headphones a coffee from my local coffee shop and I walk around my local park in, in nature mm. and just switch off a bit and just enjoy it just mm. focus on the music I'm listening to and uh yeah it's a it's about a 45 minute lap of the park and it just yeah just keeps me mm. fresh keeps me moving and uh yeah anything to do with like music is, and just like lay it like I'm still on my phone but yeah nature's a big one for me at the minute I've I've always kind of been around and enjoyed nature and being in a city that can be hard but yeah i'm very lucky that i live near some local parks mm. but yeah anything like that yeah sounds good what is a piece of advice that you'd give yourself uh 10 years ago if you give your that was a weird way of wording it <laughs> what was, <laughs> what's the piece of advice that you give to your um yourself 10 uh, yeah i'm saying it again 10 years ago what would you say to the person that you were 10 years ago what piece of advice so i've i kind of posted it on my uh instagram yes well one would be like everything always works out mm -hmm. uh it just isn't the way that your ego uh the timing uh, one is and i love this quote the timing of the universe is perfect even if it doesn't suit your ego mm. and the one that i live by a lot over the last 12 months is the man the magic cannot leave you when it is you yeah so so whenever That's i nice. whenever i doubt myself um or I kind of have that self-esteem issues. Like I always remember that like, it's, I've got myself into some positions and mm -hmm. it's the energy that I've kind of built and I put out into the world that I think contributes that. So as long as I can kind of stay true to myself and uh, keep believing in myself, then good things will always keep happening. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. They're two really good quotes. I, was, I shall steal those. <laughs> <laughs> Last question, I promise. What is something that you're um, excited about for uh, in the upcoming future? I think for me, um, the, just the, 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 there's a, there is a piece of content coming out with Quinn that I can't share anything about, but I'm very excited mm -hmm. to see the reaction of that. Um, I'm very, I, I'm very excited about that's what's so I'm so grateful for things that there's so much for me to look forward to that is one and just a continued like experience of growing and and um mm. producing content but especially with, with with Quinn but I have a DJ gig for a fantasy ball in September um nice. which is going to be very surreal because I already know that there's people flying from all over the world just to come see me like see be part of the event but i know that they they want to kind of see me which is a very very surreal feeling and that kind of yeah. pressure of like i want them to have the best night um yeah but that i think that although very scary and um it's a big step up in experience for me as a dj like because i'm very new um will just be like a once in a lifetime mm -hmm. feeling and uh just hope it all goes well, but yeah, there's just a lot of first time experiences this year and um, yeah. just excited to just keep traveling. I'm, yeah. I'm really prioritizing traveling the world more this year as well, which has been which has been great. Um, yeah. So yeah, lots, very, very thankfully, very much. What about you? Back on you. <laughs> <I wonder. laughs> um, do you know, a lot of the same, the travel is always like a, a big one. Um, like I am very fortunate as I spend probably about 40 percent of my income on travel yeah, nice. um, which is yeah, i was in barcelona recently right yeah and I'm, yeah. Off to, I'm off to morocco in about two weeks nice and then, um i think we could go out to spain again just after that and then maybe um i go to um 
I used to work with, um, sorry, let me rephrase that. I still work <laughs> uh, with um, this American production company doing what, producing audiobooks and things. And they, every so often, they fly people out to um, Oklahoma to do this like live course. Oh, amazing. Um, and it's, uh, it's yeah, that's a load of fun. So I'm hoping that we can go this year. That'll be in October. Um, but yeah, we went to like Fort Worth and, and like oh, wow. Texas and stuff. And yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's that, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, very much just more travel and uh trying not to get too sunburnt while i'm out <laughs> yeah it's definitely the territory isn't it <laughs> oh it is today i'm dying <laughs> you need well, a calippo been... or something <laughs> oh yeah i know right well this has been like so fun um thank you so much for you know your willingness to come on and uh and for you know letting me probe you with questions and uh <laughs> it's it's been a, a real pleasure so thank you so much no oh, thank you for having me mate it's been uh it's been class as i say always good to connect with other creators we're uh we're in a yeah. very niche field so it's important that we uh yeah, yeah. we kind of we can communicate so i appreciate yeah. it a lot i think it's one of those things where it's like not many other people will get it like, yeah it's exactly quite, <laughs> exactly it's quite, yeah. it's quite a specific circumstance to find oneself in yeah <laughs> well that just about does it for this episode of the audiobook club all of Mersey's socials and links can be found in the show notes as well as more information on amplify audiobooks who very kindly sponsor this podcast um mate yeah it's been such a pleasure again thank you so much and uh, yeah i hope to chat to you soon thank you very much mate frustrated by the royalty rates for your audiobook Annoyed that when the digital distributors say 70% royalties, they actually mean 70% of 50% or 80% of 70%, neither of which is an actual 70%. Wishing there was a way to cut out the middleman? Yet, you want your audiobook listeners to have a smooth and positive experience, and a direct download sale from your website won't deliver that. We at Pro Audio Voices hear you. Out of our commitment to our author clients, we've created Amplify, a program that provides an actual 65% of the sales price that you set, that gives you access to your customers' names and emails so you can reconnect with them, and keeps you in the driver's seat. Check it out at ProAudioVoices.com. You'll find Amplify in the marketing menu.